I V M. to a brand new episode of the Musafir Stories, India's very own travel podcast, where each week we share the journey of travelers in their own words and relive their experiences with you, our listeners. Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of the Musafir Stories. Hope you're all well and keeping safe. On the podcast today, we have Pranav Gogwekar, a writer, author and content creator. He takes us to an idyllic coastal town in Maharashtra and explores not just the natural beauty of this place, but also the deep historical connections it has had. But before we jump into the episode and find out more, let me also tell you that we're doing a giveaway of Pranav's debut novel titled Expedition to an Alternate Swarajya. So listen to the episode and answer three simple questions that are linked in the show notes and stand a chance to win a copy of Pranav's book. Let's hop onto the episode and find out more. So with that introduction, we'd love to welcome Pranav Gogwekar, a writer, researcher, content creator, and recently turned author to the Musafir Stories. Hey Pranav, thank you so much for being on the podcast and welcome. Thank you, Safe, for having me here. It feels great to be part of a podcast, which is not my own. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I have a very tiny uh, YouTube channel where I sometimes put on my views on different stuff related to history, mythology, and fiction. So this is first time I'm on a legit podcast, I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're all in the same boat, Pranav, as long as we're putting out content. Uh, it's sometimes a podcast and a vlog, so all of us are in the same boat. But extremely honored and excited to have you, Pranav. Uh, the intro I gave was very brief and concise. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? And you're a very new, brand new author, I should say. So uh, please tell us a little bit more about your book as well, Expedition to an Alternative Swarajya, the title is very very intriguing and interesting so tell us a little bit more sure sure so i am a writer history researcher content creator i write on history mythology fiction i am an aspiring uh, screenwriter and i have written lots of stories and one of the screenplays i have turned it into a novel which is my first novel mm -hmm. expedition to an alternate swarajya it's a sci-fi fiction set in an alternate universe where india was never colonized by the british so it, it is it is set in modern day india but the in that world indian kingdoms were able to stop british from taking over so how would india look today if the british had not conquered and it's a it's a sci-fi so so there are sci-fi elements with political history and alternate history all those kinds of causation causation is the main main conflict yeah it does appear to be an extremely interesting read and uh, especially the alternative uh, or alternate history aspect of it also excites me a lot uh, we will figure a way out to see how some of our listeners can also enjoy this book and uh, a big big congratulations on um, getting out your uh, first novel as well pranav um also, from your introduction, we do see that you have a heavy leaning towards history and uh, mythology as well. I think that's how I <clears throat> stumbled upon some of your other work too. And uh, that's how this podcast came about, uh, right? It's one of the articles that you had written about a uh, place, a place that was very, very significant in the past. And just talking about that and the connections and why it was um, that important. So really looking to explore that aspect of your personality and work on the podcast today. Without me giving away too much, why don't you tell us a little bit more about where you're taking us to today? So I'm taking to this town in southern Konkan region of Maharashtra. It's called Vengurla. Although it's not a very well-known place like other places you might have heard of, but it has a very interesting history. And as it is located in Konkan, near Goa, so it also gives you uh, Goa-like vibes. And unlike Goa, mm -hmm. it's not a very uh, mainstream tourist destination. So you won't find a lot of tourists. And so it's it's relatively peaceful. 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Pranav also has some uh, familial connections to the place. So that also uh, definitely helps in the conversation, uh, hearing from uh, somebody who has actually visited there multiple number of times and uh, knows a thing or two about the background of the place too. Um, and for me personally, right, um, obviously uh, I've heard Vengurla in the passing and we've actually touched upon it in a couple of episodes too when covering Mumbai, Goa road trips. So uh, our exposure to Vengurla has been very minimal, but uh, the thing that kind of ticked off my uh, curiosity about Vengurla was I was recently watching this, I don't know if you had a chance to watch the movie called uh, Three of Us. Oh, yeah. Uh, starring Shafali Shah and uh, yeah. uh, I forget his name, right? Uh, the actor as well, he's done brilliantly well, the guy from Pata Lok. It, it is set in Vengurla to the most part and uh, that kind of really triggered my curiosity that I have to find out more about the place and as I was digging and one thing led to the other and uh, finally we have <laughs> Pranav here on the podcast uh, getting to cover Vengurla. Um, can you also, uh, before we get into the specifics and the conversation, right, just getting here, Pranav, in terms of options, how one can get here, how well connected this is, can you uh, outline that for us too, please? Uh, sure. First of all, it's my it's my village. So I go mm. there very often and my family goes there very often and we have been going there uh, most of the time. We get there through train. We get down at mm-hmm. the Kuda station and it's half an hour, 45 minutes from there, uh, roughly 20 kilometers. If you are getting a rickshaw, it will take 45 minutes. If you're getting a car, it will take 20, uh, half an hour or something. And usually we go that way, but you can directly go by, uh, get a car or something. And it's uh, closer, like uh, from Savantwadi, it's 30 kilometers. From Kural Station, it's 20. And from Goa, uh, from Panjim, it's 60 kilometers. So if you're visiting Goa and you're, you're coming from Goa, it's, it will take roughly two hours if you're coming by mm-hmm. a car, uh, like getting a car or something. Yeah, so and as it's a native place, I usually live in my home. So I don't have to get a hotel or something. But there are plenty of options over there. And I'm sure you'll find whatever suits you and let me start first of all so vengurla mm-hmm. um, that town has got the award of for the cleanest city in maharashtra multiple times but very few people know about its history like today is just another town in the konkan region but it has multiple uh, historical milestones uh, let me start with how it comes into prominence so mm-hmm. it must have been an important trade route since ancient times and mentioned here like in different sources but the word Vengurla starts coming in uh, since the time of British and the Portuguese. So Mm. Portugal, uh, so Goa before becoming a Portuguese uh, stronghold it was part of uh, the Adil Shahi of Bijapur uh, that kingdom and when uh, and in fact it was uh, taken over by the portuguese from adil shah and adil shah wanted to the adil shah dynasty they wanted to keep portuguese influence in check at the same time the dutch east india company they wanted to get an entry to western india and they and the portuguese were rivals so what happened mm-hmm. was the dutch east india company and and the adil shah, shah Muhammad Adil Shah, uh, this was in the 17th century, uh, mid 17th century. Uh, he gave permission to the Dutch East India Company to build a factory in uh, in Vengurla. In, in and the reason was, so Vengurla was in close proximity to Goa. And this was their attempt to blockade Portuguese ship from uh, leaving Goa towards Lisbon. And they were able to successfully do that for quite some time. So once upon a time, it was very important port in in Maharashtra. And that continued till the start of Maratha Empire when Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, when he started off his independent kingdom, he wanted to print, uh, mint his coins and he needed lots of copper. And from this place, the Dutch had provided him that copper. So in a way, Vengurla is important because the economy of Maratha Empire sort of began or has its root in this area. So that's why the Marathas and the Dutch had very good relations. Later on, uh, uh, many years later, when Chhatrapati Sambhaji Maharaj was ruling uh, the Maratha Empire, that time, Prince... um, 
Muhammad Akbar, who was son of Aurangzeb, he and the Rajputs had revolted against uh, Aurangzeb's rule, but that revolt failed and Muhammad Akbar had to escape uh, the Mughal Empire. So he mm-hmm. took refuge under uh, Sambhaji, and but he he couldn't stay for long. So he had taken refuge in this very uh, fortified Dutch factory, and from there he escaped to Persia. So this is a very important political uh, event that had taken place, and this port had trade routes from Persia to um, as far as Japan. So this was once upon a time a very important port. But what happened because the Dutch had given refuge to his rebel, rebellious uh, son. When Aurangzeb invaded Maharashtra, he destroyed the whole Dutch factory. And since then, that whole fort went in decline. Eventually, Dutch uh, left India and like Dutch were driven out of India completely by the other European powers and also by many Indian right. kingdoms. So that was the end of it, uh, end of Dutch rule, not rule, but Dutch influence in the region. Later on, that mm-hmm. place came under the Savants of Samantwadi, the princely state of Samantwadi, and it, it became an important port under them. It, their main naval uh, base was in Vengurla. But mm-hmm. eventually, when it came under the British rule, the British took it over, and that became an important port for the British. Now, during British rule, slowly and steadily, because the trade routes were changing and railways were coming in, the importance of Vingula slowly went into decline. But one interesting thing happened during British rule was Sir Arthur Crawford, who is known mm-hmm. for his Crawford market in Mumbai, before becoming right. municipal commissioner of Mumbai, he was posted in Vingula. And it was he who had created this Crawford market in Vingula prior to what he created in Mumbai. It's like a town hall. The first floor is the town hall with a clock tower and the ground floor is a market. It's still, it's still in use. So it's an interesting thing that prior to Mumbai, he had a created a pro- prototype of a market in Vingurla. So that's an interesting thing which I had found out uh, during my research. Yeah, some uh, really um, important and very, very uh, interesting tid- tidbits like you say, right? Um, uh, again, l- l- like we mentioned at the beginning, Vingurla has always been like uh, one of the picturesque coastal towns that you potentially pass through as you're making a Mumbai Goa road trip. And uh, I wouldn't have really thought about the many layers of history and how significant it was as well in the past several hundred years. So thank you for um, highlighting those points for us as well. And uh, clearly the Dutch influence does seem to be pretty heavy, right? Especially during that period of the, I guess, the 16th, 17th, 17th century. I'm yeah, 17th assuming. century, yeah. Uh, 17th century. Um, uh, what about the current status of that, um, the fortified factory, right? Because of, uh, even though we are saying factory and they used it primarily for trade and stuff like that, uh, it wasn't just a little building, right? It was uh, like a fortified installation. So uh, what about its current status now? Is that something one can visit, Pranav? It's in its worst, situ- uh, worst condition right now. AS, I mm. have put out a board that do not enter this it can collapse anytime but it's still thankfully it's still there it's really in a bad condition but you must visit it for its historical importance and don't like it's not allowed to enter the fo- the fort so basically it's 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 a it's a warehouse which has been fortified mm-hmm. through a through walls yeah so unless you are interested in, it, in the history you won't find it visually appealing so there is nothing of yeah. uh, unlike in goa you see the, all the portuguese architecture nothing nothing of that sort but you can find out how it looked like uh, through uh, old pictures and also mm-hmm. there are a few images you can find on on the internet and from my article and mm-hmm. i have uh, on my youtube channel i have made a i had made a vlog on vengurla where I had covered mm-hmm. a lot of places, including that fort. Okay, yeah, very interesting. And uh, obviously, we'll make sure we add all of these important links in the description of the episode so you can check them out. Um, and also, in terms of the primary trading activity, right? Like, they initially, uh, when they came in, obviously, they came in as a trading company. So, the basically taking like textiles and spices and stuff like that from here, right? Uh, I found this bit about the copper coins as well very interesting, right? That has some 
pretty significant and long lasting impact on how like even events played out in history right yeah. so that is also a very very key milestone i would definitely say that that has its roots here in bengorla so thank you for touching that upon from the british times here right like uh, when they took it over from the finally from the uh, servants of body and uh, by the way uh, subtle plug here we did cover an episode on savantwadi as well uh, a little while ago probably a year or so ago so do check that out we'll make sure to link that too um in terms of the british influence here um any other structures besides the crawford market that you mentioned pranav not much of colonial uh, structure that i see around there is a church but that's very portuguese and that's very portuguese uh, catholic influence so i don't think uh, the british mm. had to do anything about it but i don't think there is any like for example in mumbai we have lots of colonial uh, buildings architecture mm-hmm. in bengurla i don't see any any structure of that sort but the the, the buildings are around uh, that town hall they are pretty mm-hmm. old but they are very simple architecture it's very uh, konkan style architecture you may you might find some subtle influence of the uh, from the west but i don't think there is any there is nothing uh, of that sort it's in a way it's very simple and even this structure unlike the crawford market of mumbai which is in like indo gothic or, or whatever the the mm-hmm. architecture style is this one is quite simple it's in a sense and recently they have uh, painted it uh, and they uh, even light uh, lit it up in the evening but it is simple okay. it's don't don't expect some gothic style structure over there okay okay no good to know and uh, thank you for covering off this um long list of important historical milestones as well right uh, mm-hmm. um, and helps us kind of add a little bit of a uh, color to the past of Bengorla as well um now in terms of again as somebody who's passing through here it can easily be a good pit stop to take let's say a break of a day or two and perhaps even longer if one prefers but uh, for somebody uh, choosing to have a stop over here and explore the town what are the places of importance would you uh, suggest one checks out so there are a few places which we do visit whenever we go to vengurla one of it is uh, the sagreshwar beach it's a very clean beach very few people come to visit that place now it's changing mm-hmm. but yeah that's a very uh, eye soothing place to visit uh, mm-hmm. so that's that's one place which where we go second place is the bandar the fo- the port uh where mm-hmm. you can get all the very fresh fishes depending on the time of the season you go there and from there if you climb up you can go and visit the lighthouse and interestingly this mm-hmm. lighthouse has its its uh, light red so this is uh, one of those lighthouse which alerts the ships that okay there is a port over here but but the but it, it's not that safe to directly come and come to this port because there are many small rocks on the way so that the, the the beam of light is red so this is very mm. this is not very common right right and there is another lighthouse which is called uh, vengurla rock lighthouse which is located deep into the sea where there are there are some small islands uh, one tiny islands but it's very you can go there but it's very adventurous and very risky place to be mm-hmm. so yeah so yeah. those two are important lighthouses apart from that you can check out other places like nimuska or uh, it's a it's a hill uh, besides the port from where you can see the the ocean very uh, wonderful view you will get there and you can also mm-hmm. try out the berries called karwanda it's, okay. it's a sour i don't know the the taste is different it's not sweet but uh, people like to try that out so uh, you can mm-hmm. visit that place then not little far from the main uh, town of vengurla there is this camp area where uh, which mm. used to be a military camp i guess but now it has been turned into a garden you can visit that place and in that area they have created this fruit research center where they uh, research and develop uh, new breeds of fruit especially mangoes and cashews you can try and visit that place as well Mm-hmm. and if you are a foodie and you want to try something different first of all seafood 
you can you should, yeah. yeah that you must try but if you are even if you are vegetarian or even if you are non vegetarian you can try this amboi and um, that's black watanas uh, usal Mm-hmm. so if you have uh, th- you can try that uh, so amboi or ghavan it's like dosa a pancake like dosa but it's it's consumed like uh, like a bread mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. talking of bread you can also try the square uh, alni pav which is found mm-hmm. there so just like every uh, city of uh, maharashtra has their own version of misal you can misal and misal pav you can try vengurlas that alni pav and the uh, black watanas uh, usal so mm. that is something unique over there so alni pav is basically i think it's a pav without salt and it is different uh, it's quite unique and you can you won't f- find it beyond bengurla so if you want to try that you can try that out then of course then there is just like faluda there is this milk uh, drink called cocktail it's nothing to do with alcohol it's uh, milk <laughs> milk and ice cream kind of a drink you can try that out in the in the main town in the in the shops or in the whatever the ice cream parlors in the region yeah some uh, interesting mix of local cuisine as well right uh, especially the different types of pav and yeah i mean the the fish and uh, the seafood right uh, no points for guessing that that's obviously going to be uh, hit among um, a lot of the eateries there so definitely do try that out but thank you for sharing all of those details um, i also wanted to double click on a couple of places right uh, firstly the lighthouse you mentioned and um, mm. there seems to be like two lighthouses right and uh, uh, even in your article you mentioned the first lighthouse the one that is like on the on the coast itself just an interesting tip but i came across that it's actually connected to the port through uh, set of underground stairs um and then this other one is the one that is more interesting i think right i don't know how uh, so technically is it is it accessible the one on the rocks yeah 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 there are play- people who who will take you there and honestly even if you go there first of all it's in deep not not very deep but it's in go you have to go deeper yeah it's 8 kilometers from the port as well yeah so. yeah and and it's you just have to and it's not a proper island kind of a thing it's it's a rock so you you will have to climb those rocks and i don't know how safe that is yeah but adventurous people go there and uh, <laughs> and that old lighthouse is again older and it's again in ruins but i have seen uh, somebody may make a vlog on that place so i i guess it's mm. accessible but it depends person to person if they find it worth going there <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. It's just a. Uh, it comes across as very interesting, and uh, it is also like referred to as the. the it's it's basically a series of about twenty uh, or so rocks, right? Yeah. And uh, on one of the like the bigger ones is the lighthouse. It's referred to as the burnt rocks of Vengorla as well, or the burnt yeah, islands. Yeah, yeah, right? burnt islands. Yeah. Yeah, so very interesting, and also seems to like I was just digging in a little bit out of curiosity, and it seems to have a very uh, like these uh, rocks or islands. They seem to have a pretty interesting uh, biodiversity too, with some uh, very rare birds as well that actually nest there and stuff like that. Yes, right, yes. the swift list and rock pigeons. So just some uh, interesting things i came across but uh, the lighthouse the second one which is like about 8 kilometers into the sea that uh, did appear as very interesting and kind of one of those haunted ones you come about in movies and stuff and uh, about the beaches too right uh, obviously given that this is a little more off beat i'm sure the beaches are not as uh, populated and busy like some of the other towns in goa or like proper mumbai right where it gets super busy um any other beaches like you called out the sagreshwar beach i came across this uh, vaingani beach and uh, i think mokema or mochema i don't know how it's pronounced but those couple of beaches also seem to be uh, pretty picturesque um, yeah. and fairly off beat right yeah yeah uh, also there is one nuti beach bhogwe beach which is mm. which is not like it's around in the same region so you can explore mm-hmm. that as well and uh, talking of uh, haunted and horror stories uh, let me talk uh-huh. about uh, some unique temples uh, in in vengurla mm. so now that all the chitrapals or the tutelary deities have become famous after the movie kantara 
so mm-hmm. uh, even vengurla has some unique temples so out mm-hmm. of the main there are many temples like one is rameshwar and uh, mm-hmm. sateri who are the sort of gram devat so rameshwar is mm-hmm. shiva and sateri is uh, durga so sateri is an uh, is a unique temple which is built on an ant hill or a snake burrow mm. so and it's the iconography is very simple that that that's a unique thing to uh, only to konkan another uh, god which uh, another deity will find uh, is the vetoba so vetoba is basically vetal mm. and he's also another kshetrapal and you will find his temple in goa and pa- parts of konkan and the the idol of veto vetoba is very uh, huge and you'll have to see it to know how it looks like so the vetal is worshiped in uh, in the konkan region and he is considered to be the king of all the bhut and preet or whatever and he is also considered one of sons of shiva in some puran so that's that's a very uh, unique and interesting fact about gods in konkan another important temple you should visit in vengurla and it, this is in this this you will find it uh, while going while visiting sageshwar is the manseshwar so manseshwar mm. uh, is located on bank of a river or or a creek there is no iconography you will see lots of uh, saffron uh, flags which are offered by devotees to the god and mm. you are not allowed to honk while passing by and it's another form of kshetrapal and this god this deity you won't find anywhere else so this is very unique to vengurla okay yeah very interesting this is called uh, is it the manseshwar temple yeah manseshwar temple okay and uh, even the previous one you mentioned right uh, i may be like crossing my wires or i'm not very sure uh, i know there was one uh, it was probably vetoba vetoba temple where you actually like as offerings you leave slippers or yeah yeah kolapuri kolapuri right? chappals uh, huge chappals, yeah, yeah, yeah huge yeah. ones because the idol is huge yeah so that was also like very unique right you don't often find yeah. that across uh, a lot of the other temples and uh, uh, i can't remember which episode uh, because we've done an episode on uh, kolapur as well as savantwadi i don't know in which one we covered this off but somebody made a very like very profound point that uh, not only like do you get to see the temple but you also get to see the evolution of kolhapuri chapels right like because this is being done through several years how uh, there's subtle changes to the way the chapels look and stuff like that <laughs> which is very uh, interesting as well i think not only is like uh, the way of offering these slippers unique but uh, you also get to see how these slippers themselves have um, evolved over time uh, but yeah thank you for uh, covering off um, uh, i think uh, the unique thing you also see in a lot of these temples is the temple architecture right it tends yes. to be very uh, the konkan architecture influenced uh, yeah. in most of these yeah. temples right so so konkan konkani architecture is very quite simple it's uh, terracotta roofs uh, basic like yeah. the way you the way you will find houses in konkan it's just like that yeah. so mm-hmm. yeah but this is one unique thing about uh, the architecture of konkan is uh, because it's proximity to goa and so you might find some portuguese influence in it so there are lots of temples yeah. in bengurla yeah for sure uh, but yeah these uh, some of the important ones uh, you have called out and um, we'll make sure to include those in the description too for somebody to uh, check out their images um, and the other interesting bit also uh, i know you touched upon this at the beginning itself is uh, it's uh, vengula has been like and for us one of the you mentioned clean cities mm-hmm. uh, in maharashtra right and uh, I came across this uh, little news part as well that uh, apparently this is also one of the very few towns that actually has like a really good waste management oh yeah system implemented right and uh, they're actually net positive like they generate revenue out of waste yes. every like every <laughs> year so that's also very interesting and I think something for uh, other in smaller towns i mean bigger towns as well but at least for the smaller towns to perhaps try and model on this basically segregating waste and then utilizing that and uh, there's supposed to be like a big waste management uh, plant as well right uh, made out of a landfill yes yes so so the, it's called swachh bharat waste park 
and it's another mm. uh, uh, tourist destination you you can visit that place as well <laughs> <laughs> so where people come to see how the, a dumping ground is uh, <laughs> you know like basically how yeah. the waste is uh, recycled or like it's it's is like they have turned it into a tourist destination so just imagine the kind of uh, good work they are doing yeah yeah so just an interesting bit and uh, even about the um, cashews you mentioned right uh, mm-hmm. i was uh, pretty surprised to see that actually uh, cashews from vengola are gi uh, tagged uh, yeah and, uh, i guess the the fruit research institute right that's the place you mentioned earlier yeah. uh, that po- possibly has a big hand in basically all of the research and the work they put into uh developing these uh unique varieties um, and uh, i'm sure even the mangoes of the region too right? i mean in general the mangoes from the coastal areas right uh, be it goa or here uh, ratnagiri is famous for it but even in vengola i'm sure you have your own varieties and everything of mangoes but yeah a few different things we covered over the last few minutes uh, be it the historical aspect of it which obviously is uh, your area of interest to the natural aspects like the beaches um as well as the temples and the back stories to the temples in the region and uh, of course the cuisine right everybody is always interested in the local cuisine of the place so thank you so much for covering off all of these important things um in terms of uh, people who are interested in following your work uh, be it the writing you do or even your novel uh, what's the best way to connect or follow you pranav um you can follow me on um youtube my on my channel uh, pravyav nav where i post content on history mythology and fiction and uh, you will find my vlog on vengorla over there and you can also follow me on other sister channels of that channel so there is this pravyav nav original stories where i am going to post uh, fiction then you can visit instagram uh, pravyav nav to get an update on my content and you can visit my profile prano gogvekar it's a unique name so you'll easily f- find me and if you find and if you search online you can come across uh, some of my articles uh, be bengurla there is one on kantara there is one on thai brahmins which i have recently published yeah mostly history related content you can get in touch uh, follow my channel you can buy my novel uh, expedition to an alternate swarajya which is available on uh, amazon flipkart uh notion press kobo kindle it's 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 almost uh, it's available almost everywhere yeah thank you for that and uh, we'll make sure to include all of these links in the description as well uh so that way you can easily follow uh pranav's channels and his work um and uh, we'll potentially work something out to uh so listeners do stay tuned uh given how interesting pranav's novel appears to be uh, we might mix it up uh with uh quick giveaway related to this episode as well as a couple questions about the novel so whoever is interested can definitely take part in that giveaway and stand a chance to win a copy of Pranav's book any any anything new in the works Pranav are you working on your second novel already or what what plans next so uh, i am going to write a prequel on uh, this novel Uh, which will be set in 18th century roughly uh, it's a prequel based on the same universe that i have created uh, i'm also simultaneously working on a non fiction book uh, hinduism simplified it's just in just at conceptual level and apart from that i'm also working on some uh, feature film scripts and uh, web series script which i am going to pitch this year and i hope some of them get turned into a film or a series Yeah, no, very, very exciting times ahead, indeed, and uh, we'd like to wish you all the best on all of these different projects and uh, initiatives that you're working on. And uh, a big, big thank you from uh, the Musafir Stories as well, Pranav, for being on the podcast and sharing some light on this uh, lesser-known gem in the coastal belt of Maharashtra, that is Vengorla, and uh, just sharing. how important it has been over the past and what the different layers that it's uh, deeply been uh, dripped into as well right so thank you so much pranav it's been a pleasure to have you on the podcast thank you once again for having me here this is the first podcast i'm going to be in <laughs> so yeah it's really special first of many let's hope right uh, but thank you so much <laughs> thank you pranav thank you
that was yet another great episode on the Masafir Stories. Make sure to show us some love by sharing the podcast with your friends and family. We are on Instagram and Twitter at Masafir Stories. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or the website. Follow us on our social media. We are at IVM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.